I'm out with Puke from the Indoor Gear Review. <laughs> oh, what's your channel name? Daily Outdoors. That's it, it's Daily Bread Outdoors. And we're off to find a crash site up on top of there. In fact, we're going to find two. One of them's pretty well done, and the other one is a secret. So let's go find them. Ben's a bit blushed at the moment. Just met some of his fans in car park, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. They saw him. Said, oh look, is that daily outdoors? And then I was an afterthought, wasn't I? Yeah. Oh, that must be Grizzly Gaz and oh. all that's, that he's with. There's that gonk. <laughs> yeah, who's that gonk? Uh, can't remember your channel names. So comment down below and we'll have a look at your videos. Have you been out today as well? I'm sure one was Glossop Camper. Is it Glossop Wild Camper or something? Yeah. I can't remember the other one. Crap we names, sorry lads. So we all done? Not again. <laughs> Come on, we'll hold hands and yeah, skip. Yeah, you're okay. <laughs> what are you looking at? Where are we looking? It starts about there and goes all the way along. Oh, is that? That's Kinder Plateau, yeah. That Kinder Plateau? Kinder Egg. <laughs> Kinder Surprise. There he is, look. Filming his intro. Ben's navigating and we're lost already. <laughs> but if we wouldn't have got lost and wing it, we wouldn't have found that beautiful waterfall over there. Granted, it's not exactly massive, like, you know, that's what she said as well, but we still wouldn't have seen it, would we? You want a drinky poos, mate? Wild place. Making me need a wee, that. I don't know if you can see, but where the stream runs down, this tunnel here, look, where it goes underground there. It's either that or the monster from the movie Tremors is up here somewhere. We best stop here then, aren't we? Make sure we don't make any vibrations and just admire the view. Ben's doing some fancy photography work there while Fendi <laughs> itches a nips on floor. <laughs> yeah. Look at this steep bit of hill that we've got to go up. You want to run up and tell me what it's like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People keep giving me asthma tips in my comments, <laughs> even though I don't have asthma. You know, I keep telling you that I'm unfit. But it's always after I've been walking up a big hill, people try and give me tips about asthma. I don't have asthma, I'm just fat and unfit. Give us a lift, mate. Got any biscuits? <laughs>
like a lizard. Are you a, are you a gecko? <laughs> a gecko out the arse. Who name? Channel name. <laughs> Friend is doing the same, look. <laughs> On big grass. While we sit and enjoy this view. Nineteen eighty four. I can see Elliot of Glossop. You can ET were up here with him as well. Here we are at the first crash site. The Bleak Low Bomber was a US Air Force Boeing RB 29A Super Fortress called Overexposed. It was modified as a recon aircraft rather than a bomber and crashed at high shelf stones on the Bleak Low Moorland Plateau near Glossop in Derbyshire on the 3rd of November 1948. Overexposed was on a routine daytime flight with two other aircraft leaving RAF Scampton near Lincoln at around 10.15am and heading to the US Air Force Base of Burtonwood near Warrington. The pilot, Captain Landon Tanner and co-pilot Captain Henry Stroud were flying by instruments as visibility was very low with the area covered in low cloud. You'll see how the visibility can change in the morning. Based on the flight time, the crew believed that it had passed the hills and began to descend. At around 11am, the aircraft hit the ground at 610 metres above sea level, 300 metres northeast of the summit of high shelf stones, and it was engulfed in flames. When the aircraft failed to arrive at Burton Wood Air Base, the nearby RAF Mountain Rescue Service was called to search for the missing aircraft. Already on a training exercise up on the Kinder Scout Moors, the RAF Harper Hill Rescue Team headed to Bleaklow and located the crash site around 4.30pm, by which time the light was fading. The debris of the aircraft was scattered with only a tail section intact and the recovery of the occupants took place the following morning and they were taken to Burtonwood. All 11 crew and two military passengers sadly perished in the crash. This area of the Peak District has been very treacherous for aircraft in the past, with seven airplane crashes here dating from 1939 to 1956. Out of the 26 people involved in those crashes, only two sadly survived. Ah, it's a sad, it's a sad affair, but now we're going to go on and find another crash site. This is the main one, but now we're going to go find the uh, the secret one that no one really knows about. Get some shots of uh, Ben's backside for the thumbnail. <laughs> Don't fall over. <laughs> That'd be a good thumbnail, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> Let's see if Ben sinks in here. <laughs> in trainers and all. <sighs> oh, yuck! <laughs> uh, there's me hoping Ben had sinking. I'm the one who sinks in it. <laughs> He's deployed his Terminator glasses. Got to test his boots. Huh? Boots. Let's yeah. have a look at your boots. All weathers, mate. Boots, they're trainers, aren't they? Event boot. Oh, event. Love a bit of event, don't we? Better than Gore-Tex, anyway. Good job, innit? <sighs> Just loads of bogs around here. Feel like I'm part of a Summit or Nothing video. Trevor Nath. Gaz and Ben. Should we shout something or nothing at one at Trig Point in honour of them? No. <laughs> uh, sorry, Trev. It's pretty rough walking up here. There's no real trail, definitively. But 
it's all soft and boggy it's like walking on sand the legs are killing me already <laughs> well they walked about a quarter of a mile Ben tells me that these are called Wayne stones I nearly fell over then did you see that <laughs> right we're gonna have a rest get Fendi a drink look at that view there's Manchester over there you can see high-rise flats just through the fog through the through the mist like Ben says it's like something out of a sci-fi movie yeah Ben's just pointed out you can see Trig Point that we've just been at all the way over there in distance at least we won't get lost on way back <laughs> a can 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 where are you looking? <laughs> where are you looking? you're taller than me aren't you? everybody's taller than me <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only 3 foot 2 yeah, I, oh, I can see, them. I can see Ken now, as if you could see that back there. Woo, 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 I'm a lobbit shop. Were well, they wine gums that you gave me? <laughs> hey, drunk. I need to keep filming him because he keeps tripping over and I keep missing it. <laughs> he's looking where he's going now. Another cairn. Must be acorns this way. Must be. Squirrels. Better watch out, Mick. Killer squirrels will get you. <laughs> straight down the side, from here. Yeah, straight down there. What's it called? Pennine Way. Pennine Way. Pennine Way in three hours. <laughs> It's the longest one in the UK. Yeah. Pretty much goes past my house and all. I did it in a week. <laughs> <laughs> did it did it in half a day? Somebody sent me some flip flops and I thought I needed to give them a proper test. <laughs> test them out on Pennine yeah. Way in flip flops. I just tied one of my throat straps around the back <laughs> says we should have parked one car at this end and then one car at that end so we didn't have to walk all the way back but it's good exercise in it for us fatties get out and do a little bit <sighs> knackered though I'll sleep tonight map time <laughs> yeah. Follow the acorn, it says. Follow the acorn. I think Ben's got us lost. We, wine gum, <laughs> We're just meandering about. From Pennine Way. Just all looks the same. It is beautiful, though. All the heather and stuff up here. Be nice when it gets to autumn and it all turns purple. I were hoping to be a water source up here, but it's all dried up. Squeeze some pee. <laughs> I'll squeeze some pee. Yeah. I'll have to drink my urine. Can you filter your own wig? Probably. I'll have a go with Fendi's. <laughs> yeah. Some lovely peat water. That'll do us. I'll filter this when we get to a camp. Beautiful. Come on, mate, get back up here. Ben's having a moan. <laughs> you do a review on a tent and you're like, what's that tent like compared to 
Hilleberg solo, can you do a video on it? Like, well, yeah, if you send me one. <laughs> yeah. Of course I can. There's a lot of YouTubers mourning at the moment, and they're making videos about other YouTubers mourning. I think we should do a video mourning about YouTubers mourning about other YouTubers. Like <laughs> yeah. Manception. Manception. Right, well, this second crash site is that secret. I've had to send a drone up to try and find it because we can't find it, can we? No, it's a bit further along. Yeah, it's saying that it's over there somewhere, but these are only tiny little game trails, and you don't want to be using them on mowers because you'll end up snapping your ankle. Well, you will, I, I won't because I'm a mountain goat, so. Oh, it's tough going is this really tough poor Fenzel it's gonna be pooped how you mate high on as well <laughs> look at that view though gorgeous And here we are, look, the secret crash site. Woo. <laughs> Lenheim Mark 1 L1476 of number 64 squadron of the RAF was a British light bomber aircraft which crashed on Sykes Moor on the 30th of January 1939 while on a training flight from RAF Church Fenton near Tadcaster. The crew had taken off from Church Fenton to carry out a local flying exercise. Both of the crew were fairly new to the squadron and Church Fenton, so they were familiarising themselves with the surrounding area. The aircraft failed to return from the exercise and was marked as missing. It was on the 12th of February, a full two weeks since the aircraft disappeared, that the wreck was discovered by a member of the local walking club who was trying to catch up with his party. The bodies of the two men were found some distance back along the plane's flight path, suggesting the men had bailed out but tragically were too close to the ground to use their parachutes. On the 18th of May 1991, a remembrance monument was built at the crash site by the cadets and staff of 1401 Squadron of the Air Training Corps. Lie down and have a kip, can't you, mate? Bollocks. Oh, I'm pooped. No. Good to be out, though, isn't it? Good to be out. Now we've got to walk all the way back. No. Find somewhere to camp. I just want to show you a view what we've got from here. Look at that. Beautiful, isn't it? Knackered our Fenzel. Aren't you, kid? And some miles. Right, I'm going to get uh, my tuna sandwiches out. Gone old school today for my dinner. I'll have to brew up her out. <laughs> get head twitching. Ooh, buddies. Not for you, mate. Have you bought some crisps? No. <laughs> I, I can you eat a sandwich without crisps. <laughs> you mad at. All snoozed out, aren't you, mate? <coughs> right, we're gonna head off now. Try find somewhere decent to camp with some nice views. Hopefully, get a decent sunset tonight. Don't think we'll see a sunrise, will we? Because we'll be on the other side, so... No, we're on the wrong side, aren't we? But, fingers crossed, we'll get a decent we sunset. We get up early and have a romantic stroll to the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he's having a whinge about me to camera now. 
you like to go check his video out and see what he says about me <laughs> see how much mourning he does about me <laughs> yeah, you love it don't you Ben saying I can't believe I listened oh, nearly went over then <laughs> saying I can't believe that I listened to that gas to go to that second crash site <laughs> out in the middle of moors with no paths anyway right we want a spot down here somewhere but because we're right in wind here and we want to get that view as well I mean look at that but we'll just have to try and figure it out because not looks flat down there <laughs> right time's cracking on now so and there it is look <laughs> it didn't work right well did it I was gonna park it on this flat bit of grass here but it's not that flat <laughs> I laid down in it I was sliding down hill so we're here it's still not flat but it'll do Ben's down there look we're not going to get a sunset because it's gone over mountain over there but you can see Manchester City skyline over there and it really does look beautiful Body's not working now. How far have we walked today, Ben? Uh, just under 827 miles. Under 827 miles. It's a lot that in it. Oh, look at it. Looks like someone's been plucking chickens in here. Woo. Let's get in. Oh, oh mate. That's nice just to relax now. Oh man, it's a nice view, isn't it? Eh? Nice view out there. Here, Ben. I'm gonna go halves on my last dancer. On my last, on my last dancer. <laughs> Yak. Because we're covered in cloud this morning, I decided I were going to send the drone up to try and catch the sunrise above the cloud. But as so well, I had a load of battery on drone, but as soon as it got up <laughs> into clouds, it started flashing at me, beeping, saying critically low battery landing. And the wind tucking it down all the way down this steep ravine and it's about 247 meters down here tents are up there above that ridge i've got to go all the way down there they can hear a critically low battery <sighs> there it is What a nightmare these maps are. Not what you want first thing in the morning because this cloud, bottom of my pants, 
are absolutely soaking and now I've got to get back up the other side of there where his tents are to pack up if you want to see me struggle getting up a, uh, a tower of spite 405 steps I think it is then stick around to watch me die going up there <laughs> anyway I'm gonna leave it here thanks for watching mm -hmm.